Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking another Oklahoma adventure and checking out something that a lot of people have suggested to me and I am so excited to share with you. This is actually a very interesting site just outside of Hevener, Oklahoma. This is the Hevener Runestone Park and here we're going to be able to take a really nice hike and check out some beautiful spaces but also there's a little something hidden inside but before we do I'm going to share a little bit of the history of this area through this kiosk so you guys can have a little bit of context. This is going to be an exciting one, so get your hiking boots on and let's go. Now, believe it or not, at one point in time, this was a state park, but now it is actually a locally owned and funded park that they do accept donations for. So if you come out here and you enjoy it, you can leave them a little bit and that helps them to maintain the park. But these next three signs, this is where we get the real meat and potatoes of the actual adventure. And I think you can see here here they have some really nice learning tools on here that tell us a little bit more about why this is important. So learning about the Vikings here at the park, we actually learned that they came from a place that we now refer to as Scandinavia. They would travel and traverse very difficult seas and they were considered to be some of the strongest of the strong at the time. And that allowed them to be very brave and courageous in their adventures to go to different lands. Now, we here in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas area. We have our own little adventure stories that have come out through history of the founding of the United States. However, long before that, they're estimating these guys actually came through this area, believe it or not. And they did it along this side of the country right here. They went down and then all the way around Florida and up the Mississippi and up the Arkansas River to this tiny little place in Oklahoma. Now, seeing the ships that we use now, you might be thinking that's impossible. Those rivers, many of them are not very deep, especially if it's a drought season. But the Viking ships were actually created to traverse through not only the deeper waters, but the more narrow passage waters and could get around in only three feet of water, which is insane. Now here's where we get into the part of why we know that they might have been here. And this is through the runes, the rune stone itself, which has these little markings on it, as you can see, was actually found in an area just not too far away from where we're standing right now. And we're going to actually be able to go see that. Now, this isn't the only rune stone that they found. They've actually found four in this area that spans only a short distance in mileage. So they think that these are all tracked back to the same people around the same time. And they've had people come in and study them and research them, and they don't know why. And so there's a lot of interesting things that we can learn from this, but I think that this gives us the full context of who the people were, why we know that they've been here, and now we can move forward into the where did they leave these markings. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to go on a little trail that takes us down to the ruins. But first, I'm going to stop off in the visitor center area to get a little bit more context and information. And then I'll share that with you guys after I get back outside. Okay, the visitor center was really cool. I was able to get a patch and there's some awesome things inside that you guys need to check out. So make sure that you come by here and get a map and also find out about their hip camp because believe it or not, you can actually camp here and oh my goodness, wouldn't that be cool? I might have to come back just to do that at some point to be like, I slept where the Vikings were. But for now, <laughs> We're gonna get out on this trail. Now she did show us there's a couple different routes that you can go on. There's also some longer trails in this area. So we're gonna take the one that's gonna take us to the rune stones themselves. And then there's also apparently a waterfall overlook. So we're gonna see if the water is flowing today. And if it is, it's gonna be quite the treat because I've been missing on some water. Our trail begins with the single steps down and then down this little paved path we go. Now I can already hear the water flowing and I'm just outside of the visitor center. So I know the closer that we get, the more we're going to be able to see. This is a wonderful place to come and just enjoy nature as a whole. And I think that places like this are places we should be visiting more often, especially considering it costs exactly zero dollars to come here. I always hear people say, well, I just can't afford to travel. You're just not looking in the right places because there's all sorts of free spots out there that you can go to. I've been going to them now for seven years and wow, my life has been incredible. I just want you guys out here adventuring too, that's all. 
that's all. Along the path there are several signs like these telling us about the different pieces of nature and then also the animals of the area. So this is the most common mammals of Oklahoma right here and I'm pretty sure I've seen a skunk here. I know I've seen a few raccoons here and some white-tailed deer and definitely some of these little tiny ground squirrels but I've never been fortunate enough to see a beaver or a bobcat and that might be a good thing. I have learned so many things from random little signs at little trails or kiosks or camping sites and I retain those things right up here in Monoghan and sometimes whenever I'm playing a trivia game guess what they come in handy <laughs> but um, let's get to walking now I've seen enough of this it's time for us to get closer to where I hear the water really 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 why why? Oh, this is so cool. This is so, so cool. Okay, to this direction, we go down to the ruins first. Or if we go in this direction, we get to see the waterfall, which sounds like it's flowing. We're going that way, clearly. This is uneven and it's a little bit wet, so it's kind of slick. So wear good shoes. Okay, we're standing on the top of this like outcropping area where you can see directly down and there's no rail here so it's a little a little less you know comfy for a lot of people but we're staying far enough back it is so neat to be able to see the waterfall from every single angle so you see it when it first starts it's just a trickle and then it starts to build and then it drops down and then we'll be able to see it better on the bottom so this is really cool a neat vantage point and you can see these giant trees that are just growing up from this like gulf of rocks it's really really cool and i can only imagine that whenever it's all fully in bloom that it's spectacular to see also but even after the fall leaves have fallen it's still very nice and it's quite uh, quite cool up here You got this. This isn't that bad. It's just a weird step. They're not all the same height. No, they aren't. So when you go, it's like whoosh on some of them. <laughs> it's okay though. We're halfway down. Sure. Not sure, even halfway. a little. Halfway. We're going to go with halfway. Okay, so we made it down the stairs and we have just as many stairs to go to get back up. There is no easy way to get down to this. There's just not. If you can't do stairs, this, this is not the journey for you. However, if you can, oh my gosh, we have made it to the building where the rune stone actually is. And they keep it protected so that nobody can touch it, so that nobody can deface it, and also so that the weather doesn't completely tear it apart. So I think that's pretty cool, but we're about to go inside and see what it is that we came here for the rune stone with the actual markings now they do have a copy of this that we saw in the visitor center up at the very top however it's not the real deal holy field no no this is and so we're about to go check it out and i am so so excited because it's not often that you get to see a language from afar from so many years ago in person we have petroglyphs here and i love seeing those but this is something very different than a petroglyph so up these stairs we go into our adventure oh wow look at this so they're etched into the side of this giant rock and you can see them right here very different than the petroglyphs that we see in the southwest or even in colorado this is really cool and again people have come out to research these 
and they have figured out that they date very far back into the past. They've traced the lineage to those Vikings. That is crazy. Now, right across from the rune stone itself, there's some more information about it. And they have the translation over here, as well as some more Viking information. So you get a little taste of it up at the top, but then down here, you get to learn the rest of the story. So with the two stops, they play hand in hand together to paint the bigger picture of what this is, why this is, and why you should be paying attention in your own backyard. It's pretty neat. And this is a hefty stone. This is not a small small block of stone. In fact, this one stone alone has its own encased room, and you can see it has its own windows to allow natural light in, but they also have some lighting to help us be able to see it a little bit better. This thing is under 24 hour surveillance, so no one can come in here and do anything wrong to it, and this is just spectacular. I can see why this is such a treasure to this area in Oklahoma, but also an asset to us all. Here you can learn about the different rune stones that they found and the language that is used in each of them. And you can see the difference in each one of them. They do have similar symbols. However, they also have different markings included in each one of them. A couple of interesting fun facts that I learned about the Vikings while I was here, they didn't have a compass. They would navigate by the way that the sun would sit in the sky and based on the height of the sun in the sky. That's how they'd figure out where they were going. So they were doing all of this without any kind of modern technologies whatsoever. And they were navigating some of the harshest waters of all the waters in all the seas, doing it with this method and those boats we were talking about before. Now this is what the ships would have looked like as they were navigating. You can see they would sail by a big, huge whopping sail. And then they would have this, what they called long ship that they would use. And it would show you here what those would look like as they were building them from the very beginning. It also says that the materials that they were used were a little bit more elastic than typical rugged sailboats. And so they could navigate and have a little bit more ability to navigate through those rougher seas. And also, I love that they have the historic photo of what this looked like whenever it was earlier into its journey. In fact, this was 1965, and these were some people on the runestone before the actual structure was built. They also have some great information here on Gloria Farley, who in 1948 began the research about this particular site. I have learned over time that things like this kind of tell you that one person usually is the one that kind of pushes it forward for us to have many of the sites that we go to today. Our national parks are a prime example of this. Without one person saying, hey, this deserves to be protected so that others can enjoy it or so that we can learn from it, we wouldn't have many of those. This woman is that to hear. And I think that it's awesome because now I'm staring at this massive slab of rock with something so unique, something so cool, and something so different than any other site I've visited. Now just outside the Big Roan Stone, you actually have some examples of the other two that they were comparing. And these are little replicas. So they're a bit smaller, but it gives us an idea of what they looked like whenever they were found. One was found in 1969, and I'm not sure when the other one was found, but this is pretty interesting to be able to see the difference. That was super cool. Now it's time for us to go back up the stairs and back toward the visitor center. This is the part we're gonna huff and puff and we're gonna take it a few steps at a time, but we're gonna make it and it's gonna be okay. I challenge myself with stairs at least once every trip and sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. But today I am confident that I will be hard of breathing by the end of this. Riley's gonna get a head start there. Are you confident? I am not so confident. I imagine we'll have to take this like two steps at a time. I usually take like count to 10, breathe. Count to 10, breathe. <laughs> it works out, it really does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Breathe! So far I'm okay. Okay, there's a path here. 
but there's also a path here. So I kind of want to see what's up there, but that's more steps. We can do it. We can do it. There's something ahead. There's something ahead. I'm kind of motivated to take more than 10 steps now. Let's do it. Okay, so it's drippy up here, so it means it's also wet on the ground, so it's a little slippery, but it is something. It definitely is something. Look at this. Look at this. We found something. Riley, it says there's a cave and then a dog disappeared. Yeah, um, I'm holding on to Tyson. Yeah, maybe that's why there's a leash thing. So since this is very interesting and they say that this used to be a viking cave but they're not sure if it actually was i still think this is a pretty cool little fact there's also a lot of places that they call caves that actually were just like overhangs so it could be one of those i don't know i'll have to look into this a little bit more this is fascinating i am definitely in an overhang though definitely oh we're going down let's do it okay stairs 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 we got this we got this we're going down taking a break because those stairs that we see in front of us yeah they're not looking so great no Tyson's the only one who's running at this point you know Tyson he has four legs we have two we're gonna chalk it up to that as to why he can go so much faster in all reality that makes me feel better than to think that the dog is just out running us but you know what we're being active and that's what really matters I just wish we didn't choose to be stare active today I should have stretched. I should have stretched. In retrospect, I, I should have stretched. Now it's my turn. We can do this. We can do this. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today's adventure. I had a blast sharing this with you all. If you enjoyed coming along, make sure that you leave a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, and remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. Finding cool places like this is definitely that. Till next time guys, bye!